Hi, welcome back to Kolsky RC. So, judging by today's title of the video, you'll know what it's about. And the question is, is this really expensive? So, this drone, quad or whatever you want to call it, has divided so much opinion on the internet, it's untrue. People love it, people absolutely hate it. Uh, my opinion of it is still the same, I think it's a hybrid and that's what it is. I do not believe this is an uh, an out and out FPV freestyle drone or racing drone or whatever you want to call it because it doesn't have the ability, it's not got the tune for it and it's not got the build or weight for it and certainly not got the strength for it. It's too fragile for that. But it's very very good at doing what it does which is giving you an intermediate drone and a feel for it and giving you very nice video footage for cinematic use so let's talk about the price so it's £1,249 it's a well known thing that that's what it is in the UK I think it's $1,299 and it's expensive and it came out to a lot of criticism people said it was too expensive but from what you've already got on the market it's probably about right so let's discuss it in the fact that if you want to go if you don't want to go digital obviously this video wouldn't be for you anyway because you'd be looking at a lot cheaper the whole thing we'd be talking about would be null and void if you like because there's a lot cheaper to get into fpv if you don't want to go digital but if you want to go digital you're going to have to do it somewhere so let's discuss <coughs> the ways you can do it 1249 will get you this with a battery with a charger up and running, you just buy an SD card and you're up and running and you're ready to go. And you can fly FPV with it. I'm not saying for one second you can't, you can learn to fly FPV, get used to it, but you just, in my opinion, can't do acro with it. Or you can do the other thing. So on the other side of this table, we have virtually the same thing, believe it or not. So this is the Diatone Roma F5 on to, uh, with a DJI camera. This has the Cadex Vista, which doesn't really matter because we're not going to be wanting any kind of footage out there because we're going to get the footage off this. This is the DJI Osmo Action. I already own this. It films in 4K60 and will give you very similar results, if not exactly the same as this. Both of these have electronic image stabilisation and that will give you the same result or oh, very similar. Big advantage of course of this, this will fly so much better. This is a true uh, freestyle drone, so this will fly perfectly. You'll have none of the issues you're going to have with that. You can crash this and it'll bounce. You might break a prop, you might break an arm if you're really unlucky. Go buy an arm for a couple of quid, you're back up in the air and we're in 20 minutes. And it will give you the same, but don't get me wrong. I'm going to get the same... Um, picture quality image quality out of this are they am out of that there's a couple of things we'll talk about that this will do different than that but lo and behold that's what you're going to get this drone comes in around 260 uh bind and fly we're going to just say call it bind and fly we aren't going to buy a receiver for it because we're going to fly it with the dji remote so this is going to cost you 250 the osmo action is around the same price so you've got 500 pounds so far so we're at 500 for the drone with a camera. Of course, you don't need to have the camera, but what I'm trying to do is compare like for like, if you like. We have the DJI transmitter. You can fly this with certainly without the transmitter. You can fly um, with, a, with a different transmitter. You can buy yourself a transmitter for 120, 130 quid. Get yourself a Crossfire receiver and be up in the air but you have to then buy crossfire modules so to get the type of range you're going to have to buy crossfire or something like that but let's say you're stuck with this and this is 300 and we're 800 pounds now and then we've got the goggles so these are the f these are v1s virtually no difference at all you don't need to have the fancy um all the fancy stuff i've got here you don't have to have the fancy antennas you can just have the standard antennas that come it's going to cost you 550 and already we're £100 more than this and we haven't bought a battery. This is a 2200, I haven't got a 2000, so this is a 2200 success. It's done a couple of flights on it, which is why it looks brand spanking new. 
This will give you probably about the same flight time because this doesn't do 20 minutes, don't get me wrong. You're probably going to get a very similar flight time off this. This battery was about 35 quid. Much, much cheaper, obviously. And you've got that on top of there. But I haven't got a charger. So let's say a charger is going to cost me 30 and then I'm suddenly up at 14.50, but I don't need to have this transmitter. We could go by the Radio Master uh, TX16S and stick Crossfire into that. And I paid 200 and just over 200 quid for my with Crossfire. And so I'm another 100 off. So I'm, I'm within a ballpark figure. The two are in the ballpark figure. So the reason for the big difference in prices is this remote's only 140 quid. Uh, this remote, by the way, in my opinion, and my opinion is nowhere near as good a remote as that. As I much prefer to fly with this transmitter. This feels better to fly with, in my opinion. Again, it's all my opinion. I do prefer that. Other than that, I'm going to get very similar experience with both. Slightly higher resolution in these goggles to the originals, but that's about it. Of course, the difference with this is, once I've bought this, this is what I've got. I'm stuck with this, and I'm going to pay another 139 for a battery. And the costs are going to keep escalating. But I've already got the charger, so I need to buy another battery, 139. Where I could you buy a battery for that? For 35. And all of a sudden, you can see where this is going. And obviously, I can then replace this anytime I want with another one. I can just go buy another bind and fly or build my own. I can build my own for around 250, 260. I then might want to build myself a seven inch, which is going to work by the way with this setup. So all of a sudden for another couple of hundred quid or two or three hundred quid, I can have another one and I can have two quads with this setup and I can keep going and so forth. So if you're new to this and you want to get up in the air quickly, people are saying you can buy this, but you're just as quick up in the air for this. You've got to, all, you've still got to bind all these together. All these three need to be bound together. This is ready to fly roughly out of the box. You just put your props on, buy yourself a battery, connect it up on beta flight, make sure that they talk to each other, and you're up and running with the massive advantage, of course, is if you smash this, you can replace parts on it. But it's still expensive. There's no, nothing cheaper. The other way of doing to that is go buy um, Shark Bite, which is around 250 quid with a module and a camera but then you need to have decent goggles to plug into it so let's say you want to put some decent goggles into it let's plug some we're not going to go fat shot let's say you'll buy some sky zones and you can buy the O3 uh, zeros which you can pick up at the minute for around 300 but then you've got 550 again and you're back at the same kind of money yet again and you're buying an add-on for the goggles and let's be fair it isn't as good Shark bite's not as good as DJI's system at the minute. It's not as refined, but they probably will refine it over time. So again, you're into a lot of money. To get into digital, you're going to have to spend. It, 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 there's no cheap option into there. The best way to get into it, if you aren't into it, is by is you can do it in stages. So if you already have FPV, I do not, I need to say this straight away, I do not say you should go out and go straight into digital FPV. I don't think you should. I think it's a crazy thing to do. I think you should go a different route into it. Um, I don't agree with buy. I don't these packages you can buy for around a couple of hundred quid, which seem to be all over the place at the minute. Where you get goggles and you get a quad and you get a transmitter. The transmitter is pretty pretty bad. The goggles will be awful, and the quad's probably all right. I think you're better doing it a different way and trying to find yourself a decent deal on some decent-ish goggles. That'll do you for a bit. I reviewed the Eosheen. Um, I can't remember which ones they were now. EV 300s are they? Goggles recently. Um, decent. Pick them up for a couple of hundred quid. And I think they were decent goggles. Nice resolution on the screen. A couple of hundred quid. Buy yourself a Radio Master Transmit. 120. you got 320 there. And you can pick yourself up. The Nazg a Nazgul 5, which is a beautiful five inch bind and fly from iFlight you can pick that up for around 150 if you buy it from Banggood and you're at a much much cheaper place to start with or you can do there's other routes to do if you don't want to do a five 
So, sorry about that. I don't know if this is going to come back together, but I believe what my camera decided to shut itself down then. So, I don't I don't agree that these packages are the way forward. I think they're a cheap way to get into it, but then you've got something that you're needing to upgrade. You can't just upgrade part of it. And you've got everything's not that great. You're better off doing it a different way. And getting yourself into FPV, which is far better worth than spending this kind of money. As a lot of people that have commented on my videos that have bought this as their first drone. This is not, absolutely no way is this a beginner's quad drone, whatever you want to call it. It's not for beginners, it certainly isn't. What this is brilliant for is if you've already got a Mavic or you don't have a Mavic and you want to get some cinematic footage, this is great because you can fly it like a Mavic. But the biggest and big advantage is, of course, you can do your nice swooping big turns and have big circles to have some really nice looking footage come out of it. You don't have to fly this as a freestyle or racing quad at all. You can just fly it like that. And I think that's what its market is. It's expensive, but so is everything else in that market. Does it replace a Mavic? No, it can't do because it's not got 3-axis gimbal and it's not going to give you that super stable um, fixed horizon look that you might want if you're, if you're doing that kind of flying. I, I love that and I wouldn't want to have I wouldn't want to just have it this way I like to have the fact I can have that or I can have big swooping turns and nice angled horizons so that's why it's divided so much opinion and the big thing is that people FPV pilots and there is a bit of snobbery in in this game because there's people who think this is plastic and it's just a piece of junk. Well, it's not, is it? It's nowhere near that. This is very, very advanced. It's got a lot of technology in there that's very leading edge. But I think the biggest issue with it is how they marketed it. Or how perceived it is by the public of what it is. Because it isn't a racing drone and it isn't a freestyle quad. It's a hybrid. And that's what it's great at. So this was just a quick video to show you that I don't think, although it's expensive, let me get that straight, this is expensive, but price point wise it was always going to be that kind of money with the other, with how much it costs to do it this way. And to do it this way is roughly, it's actually a slight, it's more than doing it this way, but the big advantage is of course you can change your quad whenever you want, batteries are a lot, lot cheaper. And you can mix and match how you want it after that transmitter. So... If you've watched this video, I hope it has helped you. One thing to take away from that, in my opinion, do not buy this if this is your first quad. Certainly do not do that. Go back. If you want to get some nice footage and that's what you're doing it for, go buy yourself a Mavic Mini or something. Mavic Mini 2, which is a great little drone for 380 quid or whatever it is. That'll give you really nice footage. And isn't going to crash as easily as this will. If you do buy one of these, don't be tempted to stick it in manual mode until you are 100% ready. Fly the sim that you can get on, that you can download. The sim's only available, unfortunately, um, as we speak, for Apple devices. You can't have it on Android, which is a bit of a, a let down. It's actually quite good. I've had a quick play with it, and it does get you into it but like everything else simulator in the real world uh, a lot of people say I, i'm one of these people that think sims are great but uh, there's nothing gonna prepare you properly without than actually flying it which is why i think buying it at your first drone get yourself a cheap quad get yourself up in the air and practice rather than do it on a sim so thanks very much for watching have a fantastic day